the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My dear friends, sisters and brothers, children, youth, religious sisters in your convents, fathers, uh, people of other faiths, and uh, recently also uh, somebody from the Order of Consecrated Virgins wrote to me, welcome, welcome also to the family, welcome to the Eucharist. Uh, we meet once again, and now we meet uh, at the beginning of a new month. Now this academic, new academic year begins around this time, but because of the lockdown, things have been changed. In our archdiocese, the transfers take place today. All that is held up, but we pray for ourselves that, uh, that gradually we come back to normal. And I was thinking that today, as we, today the Feast of Mary, Mother of the Church, we pray to her in a special way uh, to bless us, to be our mother, as she's the mother of the Church, and protect us. Uh, I was thinking also today to let's pray especially one category of people who, one section of our people who are really, we've been thinking of all of us, ourselves, work, etc. The elderly people in your homes, uh, they are vulnerable also for health reasons, but also weak and they are like, dependent on others, let's pray for them for emotional strength, spiritual strength, physical strength in this particular moment. And let's begin the sacrifice now, asking God's forgiveness for our sins. As we humbly say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also, grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day and exulting in the holiness of her children. May she, may, may she draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the apostles went back from Mount of Olives, as it is called, to Jerusalem, 
a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. There were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Jude son of James. All these joined in continuous prayer together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our response, glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Can you repeat? Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. Our response, glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God, and of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. Our response, Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled. This man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance. My home is within him. Our response, glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. O happy virgin, you gave birth to the Lord. O blessed mother of the church, you warm our hearts with the spirit of your son, Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it into his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead and did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water followed, flowed out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, families, friends, children, youth, uh, religious sisters, your convents, consecrated virgins, all of you, God bless you. And happy feast, the feast of Mary, 
mother of the church. In the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, this is uh, after the resurrection of our Lord. They were in the upper room waiting for fear of the Jews because they might have attacked them. Uh, but uh, they were praying. And Mary was with them, encouraging them, strengthening them, and also giving them a good example of total obedience and faith. During the Second Vatican Council, when uh, the whole renewal of the church was being discussed, 1962 it began, uh, naturally the whole of theology was being revised. Pope St. John the 23rd had called this Vatican Council Ecumenical Council. Ecumenical Council is a meeting of all the bishops in the world, all the diocesan bishops, Agduri bishops, all those titular, all the bishops of the world come together and discuss some important pastoral, theological point, just like had happened, uh, remember, when we were uh, earlier in the readings, we had the Council of Jerusalem, when Paul was worried whether the before being baptized, they should be circumcised or not. Before being baptized, should they accept the Jewish law or not? And then Paul said, no, we go to Christ directly. That was a theological point which uh, we discussed, Council of Jerusalem, the first council, and now this is the last council we had, uh, the Second Vatican Council in Rome, 62 to 65. And then uh, they discuss now, uh, evidently, the whole of the theology of Mary. What is the role of Mary in the church? What is the role of Mary in redemption? Very clearly, sisters and brothers, not to have any doubts, Mary is she's the mother of the Redeemer, because the angel Gabriel told her that she, she was got to be, she was chosen by God to be the mother of the word who was coming to redeem us. But she was a human person, therefore she is the mother of the redeemed. She is undoubtedly redeemed, she is a human person, and uh, there's an infinite gap between uh, who she is and what God is. But she's really preeminently the redeemed. Now Mary, uh, in her whole life, obedient to the Father, therefore total obedience, faith in God, re uh, really trusted God, she never understood many things what was happening, the life of Jesus, what Jesus said, and uh, hope, knowing that this is okay, God has promised I trust in God completely, and charity, a heart overflowing with charity, uh, service of the apostles, service of the people, Cana, they, she felt sorry for them, and then she completely uh, accompanied Jesus on the cross. And so, uh, discussing all this, uh, the council fathers decided that she, since she is so much an integral part of the church, the discussion was, should we have a separate document on Mary or not? And then they said, no, really, she's part of the church. She's fully uh, with us in our weakness, except for sin, in our human condition, needing redemption. She needed redemption also. And therefore, they put her... She said, there's a, there's a document, a decree, a constitution on the church. And uh, she, Lumen Gentium, she is one chapter in that the eighth chapter is devoted to her and her role in the whole of Catholic theology. And in that particular chapter, it's got three parts, they discuss about her role in our own lives, her role in the church, her role as mother of Jesus. How, that, that, those are the three sections of this uh, particular chapter 8 of the Second Vatican Council of the Constitution of the Church. In that they showed how she preeminently, as I said, was obedient, preeminently had hope, had faith and charity. And therefore she, and the Council said, she's uh, got many titles advocate because she prays for us, mediatrix, and, and so on, uh, and that she's like a mother to all of us. The council did not call her mother of the church, but at the end of the third session of the third part, it was, it was October to December, 62, 63, 64, 65. Uh, on the 21st of November, 64, 
just 10 days before Pope Paul VI came to Mumbai, came to Bombay then, came for the Eucharistic Congress in Bombay and came to this chapel also. Uh, Pope Paul VI gave a concluding, he concluded the session of the, this particular session of Vatican Council and in his concluding sermon, he said, Mary, he spoke about Mary and he said, uh, Mary is the mother of the church. The first time the, uh, it was officially used, Mary is the mother of the church. He said that she's mother of the church, that is, she's the mother of all Christian peoples, the faithful and the pastors. Uh, Paul the Sixth said, Saint Paul the Sixth said, pastors probably reminding all the bishops of the world present. So she's of all the faithful, but of all the pastors, and therefore very eminently somebody tenderly prayed to. And she said, uh, he said that, uh, Paul VI, that in future now, we'll use this title also for her, uh, because it's a very tender title, Mother of the Church. And then afterwards, as you know, in the litany, the church allowed in 78, that the, this also be added to the liturgy of the church. And in 1980, 40 years ago, the church said, let's have also a mass for her as Mother of the Church, the mass I'm saying now. And two years ago, uh, 2018, uh, Pope Francis inserted it into the calendar, said this is uh, obligatory, you must pray to her as Mother of the Church at least once a year. And that's what we are doing today. And said on the Monday after Pentecost is the day, uh, we'll, we'll pray to her. And why, sisters and brothers, because it's linked to the whole passion of our Lord. We read the passion where Jesus, during the passion, handed over the responsibility of being the mother of John, John representing us, the mother of all of us, disciples, mother of the church, who represents uh, all those disciples of Jesus. And then Mary, together with the apostles, prayed and received the Holy Spirit. And therefore, uh, this is kept, this is close link with Pentecost, the Passion of our Lord, Easter, uh, begin our life. That's the reason why the Pope chose um, Monday after Pentecost. Mary then is somebody, all of us, she's, a, she's the mother of the church, mother of each one of us. Uh, Paul VI said, mother of the faithful and of pastors, priests, religious, uh, and uh, lay faithful and bishops also. We pray to her in our moments of deed. She's our intercessor. Uh, on Wednesday, so many of us go to Mahim or go to your own church for the Navina to Our Lady Perpetual Saka. And we have experienced her, her help, her maternal protection. At home, so often we pray the rosary and we have a particular intention. Somebody, uh, I think uh, it's instinctive to all of us, to many, many of us, that when there's some problem, you run to Mary, because then there's a statue. Before an examination, so many students run to the statue and pray to her. Three Hail Marys, I stood with the other boy, and uh, run to this image of the Sacred Heart and the uh, image of Our Lady, and three Hail Marys before going for an exam important examination. But that's So instinctively you turn to our mother, turn to Jesus, then to our mother, uh, saying to help. She's an intercessor. But she also is, as a mother, a model for us to imitate. That's why she's the mother of the church. She's not just somebody to uh, get things for us, that's secondary, but also somebody whom, who's there, uh, who, from whom we imitate the qualities, which I mentioned of obedience, openness to God's full trust in the Father, full hope in Jesus Christ. She accompanied, she allowed Jesus uh, to come into her life as she helped Jesus in his mission. She was the perfect disciple of Jesus. She co continued his work of spreading the good news, of making people be uh, believe in Jesus and walk the path of the Father. That's why she's mother of the church. Sisters and brothers, you know, and we've heard and we believe, that she appeared, uh, Ludes, Fatima, Guadalupe, uh, and so many places, and we know the amount of devotion of people have, who have uh, felt towards her after her intervention. She appeared at very critical moments in the world's history. Today, it's also, I won't say critical, but an important and a difficult moment in the world's history, the whole world. 
everybody, uh, the news, the channels and papers, everything, only coronavirus, COVID-19, COVID-19, this, that uh, news. Uh, it's an important moment. And uh, Mary, we turn to her, the mother of the church, the mother of the world in a way. Uh, so we, uh, we turn to her to pray for us, to embrace us, to take us, take our prayers, our pleas to her son, so that we are, we see the way out of this, not the lockdown, but the spiritual lockdown, the mental lockdown, the emotional lockdown, the physical lockdown is one thing, but all that, because so many consequences of this pandemic, which we don't foresee. We've been discussing this often in meetings of what is the post-COVID-19 situation? What is the post-COVID-19 church? What is the post-COVID-19 philosophy? How will society, how will your birthdays be celebrated? How will we have masses? How will we have weddings? How will we have baptisms? There's so many things. Now we pray to her. Pray to her to somehow bring the light of Jesus to us in our lives. Show us the way ahead. Make the way ahead not too difficult. We can't, uh, we, we don't escape the pain, but make the way not too difficult so that we can bear it. Sure, on this day when we celebrate the Feast of Mary, Mother of the Church, our prayers, the prayers of all the world, all of all Catholics, all over the world will pray to her, will really reach her heart, and our prayers will reach God. God bless you. Happy Feast. And today, Let's keep Mary very specially in our prayers, in our minds, in our hearts. And we'll try to imitate her to be really our mother, a mother whom we love so much, like so much, pray so much, and also depend on her. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you, be pleased and receive this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb, and giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the Church. Standing beside the cross, she received the testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love. She watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and we profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced in eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, obedient to our Savior's command, taught by him about prayer, let us say the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive him. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. 
O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary's motherly help, your Church may teach all nations by proclaiming the Gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. And may you who have devoutly gathered to pray this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God bless you. Once again, happy feast. Uh, after the blessing, you realize that uh, today is a sp today we can uh, she she's our protectress, and we have a right to pray to her very specially today. And I'm sure she'll the whole world is praying to her as mother of the church. And I think today with this uh, pandemic and the whole critical situation all over the world, uh, we realize to our one family all over the world we realize we need a mother in heaven to pray for us. So pray pray to her. Thank you for uh, participating. Uh, today uh, is, I want to tell you that I get many requests for prayers. I want to tell you I pray for you. The requests for each day, uh, Saturday I keep them especially for all the intentions. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I can visualize the people have told me moving stories of the prayers you need. Uh, I, I really am praying for you at Mass and I keep your intentions and that is only for you. Uh, be sure that uh, you're, you are thought about, cared for and We've taken up to our Heavenly Father, your pleas. Uh, this evening is Monday, today is Monday, and this evening we'll have again, what I, I've been trying to have scripture classes on um, Monday because that's so important for us to understand the Word of God. And Father Warner, who spoke last time, will carry on and conclude his uh, section on uh, Matthew, uh, which, he was, which he spoke about last time, the interesting talk. And then... Uh, to help you because you've learned scripture, but how to pray with the scriptures, uh, we'll have uh, Lexio Divina, but today we'll have uh, Father Evan uh, leading us in this Lexio Divina. God bless you, have a lovely day, and a lovely week, a lovely month, bringing all the day, week, month. God bless you. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. 
we pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through Christ our lord amen you are the honor of our people oh virgin mary the joy of israel